the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate St. Herman of Alaska. We also celebrate uh, St. Spiridon of Trimethuis, who is one of the uh, great beloved saints of the Greek Orthodox tradition. St. Herman of Alaska uh, lived in, uh, on Spruce Island for 30 some years, um, on a small, relatively small uh, island. It's actually, um, would take quite a, quite a bit of time to walk around because it's, it's got a big mountain in the middle. But it's, it's a relatively small island in, uh, right across the harbor from Kodiak. Uh, St. Herman had been a monk at Valam Monastery in the, when the uh, uh, St. Nazari had been sent there from Sarov. Uh, and uh, he had helped in that restoration of Valam Monastery, which happened at the end of the 18th century. Uh, Elder Nazari, Saint Nazari, was also the spiritual father of Saint Seraphim of Sarov. So you can say that Saint Herman and Saint Seraphim were spiritual brothers. Uh, Saint Herman, however, went on this mission. Uh, he was chosen because he was um, a mature and stable monk. He wasn't a priest, he wasn't a deacon, he wasn't, had no clerical rank, he was just a simple monk, and had lived uh, not only in the uh, community of the monastery, but had also lived as a hermit. And you can go on Valam to the place where his hermitage was located, and it's today called St. Herman's Field. Um, the, that place um, is not far from the main monastery, but far enough where he could have some peace and quiet from all of the, the comings and goings in the main monastery. St. Herman thus was always a lover of silence. He was a lover of solitude. He was a lover of the wilderness. Having been chosen to go to Valam, or to go to Alaska, he and his companions um, made it across Siberia. It took a whole, almost a year um, to walk and go by cart and by river um, all across the entire Siberian landmass uh, to the Pacific where they got on a boat and arrived in Kodiak and established the Orthodox mission there. And from that mission was the foundation, real foundation of Orthodoxy in America. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a monastery, they established a, uh, they meant to establish a diocese, and, but their first and foremost mission was to convert the Americans. Now those Americans up there spoke Yupik and they spoke Eskimo and they spoke Aleut, um, but they were Americans nonetheless. And the Russian traders had been up there for some time um, and it was not long before that after the monks arrived that the monks went on strike. Um, the Russian traders were, were treating the natives so badly that the monks refused to serve uh, any services for the Russians. They wouldn't do marriages, they wouldn't do baptisms, they wouldn't do, do funerals, they wouldn't do anything. They'd go out and baptize the natives and marry and bury them, but the Rus until the Russians started to um, treat the natives in an appropriate manner, um, they stopped serving them. Well, you, can't, you can imagine that the, the, the Russians were not too happy with uh, with the monks. Um, but, and so there was also all sorts of controversy. And St. Herman got tired of it all, and he uh, took a boat across the harbor, about seven miles, uh, which uh, in August isn't bad because the water is like glass, um, but in any other time of year, it's the North Pacific with big waves and um, and lots of storms. But he went across and he established a hermitage uh, and lived over there um, uh, by himself in the woods uh, a couple of miles from the nearest village, uh, the nearest Aleut village. And when, uh, when, the, when the horrific epidemics um, that were brought by, uh, by the Europeans and especially by the Americans came and swept through the population there. Um, he, 
Saint Herman nursed the uh, the people of the of the village. He took care of their orphans because many many died, um, leaving 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 orphans and and widows and uh, and he had a special love in particular for the children, where he would uh, he would make them cookies. He would he would teach them. And, and care for them. St. Herman also was credited with having stopped a tidal wave. Uh, there had been a big earthquake. Everybody knew there was going to be a tidal wave. So he took an icon of the Mother of God and planted it on the beach, and he said, that wave will come no farther than, than this. And, that's, and, it, and it didn't. And the icon remained dry. He was also credited with, with helping to stop a forest fire. And the same kind of thing. So St. Herman, even in his life, was known for his miracles, was known for his, um, for his great love of the people. Um, uh, he, was, he was understood by all of those who visited to be, uh, to be a great elder. The Russians uh, who would come on the ships, the trading ships, would come and consult him and, and would ask his advice and ask a word from him. But his life was mainly focused on serving the native people. Uh, he died, I believe, in 1837, having been 35 years living by himself on that island. And in, in living... Uh, uh, as a faithful monk, uh, with uh, saying the Jesus prayer, uh, doing whatever services he could for those who were who were there with uh, with him and nearby, he attained to profound spiritual maturity and great holiness of life. And it was, in fact, that his memory lived on among the natives as if he had never died. And they talked about him as if he had never died. Um, and they still talk about him as somebody who's clearly present. His, his relics are in that same church that was built by the missionaries in 1794 in Kodiak, uh, Holy Resurrection Cathedral. Um, and his, his presence is a, is a powerful force of grace permeating um, permeating that cathedral and permeating the whole area. Uh, and people know of him and love him um, and realize and, and recognize that he is their local saint who is interceding for them. But not only, not only for the people there uh, in Kodiak, not only for the people of Alaska, but for us also. Um, it's a wonderful thing to go up to Spruce Island for the, uh, for the pilgrimage at the beginning of August um, and to participate in that, to go and celebrate liturgy um, in the place where his grave was. Um, he was. There was a chapel to St. Sergius and Herman of Valam built over his grave. Um, um, and his, and it's, it's, a, it's a place and a... Uh, it's a place that's just full of grace. So as we remember St. Herman today, we remember the, not only the, uh, the foundation of the, of the church in America uh, by those missionaries who came from Valam Monastery in 1794, but we remember especially the spiritual foundation of our church. Built on, built on the prayers of St. Herman, built on his, uh, spirit, his attainment of spiritual maturity, his growth into eldership, uh, so that his prayer uh, supports our church now and all of the Orthodox faithful in America. Uh, see, we can see him as our spiritual forebear. He came from Russia, but became, became an American. He became an Alaskan. And, uh, and that uh, life which he uh, pioneered um, of, the, of a, the Orthodox spiritual life, the Orthodox monastic life, is something that can inspire us even now. And uh, through his prayers, may Christ our God have mercy on us.
The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.